Um, my name is Norma. I suppose I've had a long and varied career. I originally graduated from UCC um, in the 80s. My kind of my student number reveals when I began was like 40 years ago. And it was a degree in computer science and maths. And it was the second iteration of, of that course as well at the time. And I always say you can never be too old to go to college, but you definitely can be too young. And then I worked in Dublin for a couple of years with um, Eurocom, which was an electronic mail company. And it was ahead of its time in that it was providing electronic mail for the European Commission when electronic mail wasn't a standard form of communication at that time. Um, and then I went to Sydney. I worked there for a couple of years. And then I spent 10 years working in London for Siemens UK. And I had kind of various roles there, kind of training manager, customer service manager. And then I returned to Ireland I, with three children. And initially I worked for a startup company, but then I had a fourth child. So then I kind of went and did part time kind of training and teaching. And then the recession came and all of that. And then I went back full time in 2011 and I worked for Cork Chamber. And I set up the Cork Chamber Business Schools and I also created the, um, the Cork Digital Marketing Awards as well. And that was a way to sell digital marketing training courses that I created those awards. And they're still going as an annual event now in Cork. Um, and I went back again. I love education and training. I live and breathe, I suppose, learning. And I did a master's in business science, I did project management. I did various diplomas. And then the last five years, Prior to the pandemic, I worked for Aspira, which was a technology company, and I was the head of global training there. And my work involved, you know, traveling all over the world, training project managers. And um, then the pandemic hit and I was working from home and there were six of us working from home. So it was pretty crazy. And I decided to opt for redundancy. And then just recently, then I started my own kind of consulting and training business. And um, so, yeah, and, and that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. And um, yeah, very, kind of very in a nutshell. Yeah, very impressive career and very interesting career as well, uh, Norma. Norma, and I've been, I've been watching, you know, you, you setting up that consultancy. What does the consultancy specialise in? Can you tell us a little bit? Yeah, it, it's it, principally it's, it's project management training. So I would work with a lot of, you know, global companies where they're trying to build their project management experience, build their project management capability internally, um, kind of rolling out best practice. Um, and and that's essentially what I do. And I hope now to broaden my repertoire as in from this course now, you know, um, being a facilitator for um, doing design sprints with organizations and helping them to innovate. Yeah, and uh, for anyone watching, I suppose I've seen uh, your work in action or emerging, and I'd really, really recommend it as well, Norman. And hopefully, we'll have a chance to discuss that just now. Actually, you know, wh what was your project about? Um, obviously, I, I've a, a good inkling as to what it's about, but let's yeah. uh, explain to the audience what what it was about. Yeah, so my project was I was looking at the the emotional engagement of the hybrid tribe, and I suppose you know. That's a top priority for organizations at the moment. I mean, IBEC reported that, you know, employee retention, employee attraction, employee engagement, they're the top priorities for organizations. And, you know, in March 2020, you know, the way of working was broken and the work tribe got disconnected. And, you know, the people who came back to work uh, or the people who went home to work in 2020 were not the same people that came back to work in 2022. You know, they had different values, expectations. They wanted more flexibility. And so organizations now have a, a new challenge um, and they have to put back together what was a fully functioning tribe back together again on a physical and emotional level. And, you know, I was looking at the question, can they put the tribe back together? You know, you know can they put Humpty Dumpty back together again on a physical and emotional level? And organizations tend to be focusing on the physical aspects and the legal aspects in terms of time and place and how they're going to manage that. But I believe that's only one side, side of the coin. And the other side is the emotional side of the coin. And that's what my action design research project focused on, which asked the question, you know, how might we design an emotional engagement tool, you know, that for a tribe that is now broken in order to reconnect them? Um, so I researched the key drivers of emotional engagement. I collaborated with industry experts. I talked to 
HR, you know, directors. I talk to psychologists and to understand what are the key drivers of emotional engagement. And so I put together a tool which is simple and practical and it's based on the Rubik two by two. And, you know, each side represents a key driver of emotional engagement. And I suppose it's it's a physical tool and essentially it's a prompt in that, you know, it's on your desk. This is just kind of a, a, an original version of it, but it's on your desk and it prompts you because often as I was talking to HR directors, they get involved in the kind of the recruitment and the everyday day to day stuff, whereas that's kind of a you know reminder of, you know, the emotional engagement aspect of of the, the workforce. But that's it. So it's it's a it's a simple tool. And, you know, often when people talk about emotional engagement, they think it's this woolly thing, you know, that kind of the best places to work have. And if you don't have it, you need a huge investment. So I think this is um, a, it's a simple tool and it has all of the emotional engagement drivers together in an organized way. And, um, you know, it's immediately accessible and it kind of brings the emotional engagement drivers to the surface. Yeah, I love uh, it. And, and uh, funnily enough, um, I'm saying to you, Norma, I also have an image of it here on my, my screen because I've been uh, intrigued uh, by it for a while. But I also really like the way you went back into sort of literature, back into best practice trying to identify I think you call them pillars at the time Norma and as a result of those pillars then you were able to identify these factors and those factors then become cues for how maybe as HR professionals you know people need to respond to individuals that it isn't just the mechanistic stuff the legal stuff the physical stuff it's the emotional yeah. stuff and I really really like that Norma this has to be surely part of the future of your own consultancy because it sounds to me as it it's so time yeah and, and yes it is and I mean that is my my plan is to kind of create a playbook because speaking with um you know I, I show the the cube to HR um directors and psychologists and you know they were saying to have a, a, a playbook with it so what I plan to have it's it's called the I engage cube um I standing for intentional so making them you know because I think in the hybrid workforce you know, prior to that, in the, you know, the normal prior to the pandemic, you know, things happened organically or by osmosis. You know, you bump into people, you'd have chats and encounters. But I think in the hybrid world, we have to be far more intentional in how we engage with our employees. And that's where the I comes from. And engage then is for every side of the cube represents, you know, E for exercise, empathy, you know, N for need to be present. G for get up and go, which is resilience. You know, A is for um, <laughs> what is A for? <laughs> <laughs> Look, actually, you have to, it, the audience have to pay to find out what the yeah, A is for. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the future yeah. business them model. Keep them in suspense. That's but, it. Um, so yeah, so it is. Um, you know, it, that it, it's a tool. Um, I can't remember the question, but what thing. No, oh, but it was a great answer anyway, and okay. I love the answer. Okay. Yeah, it was, I, I was really saying, I really hope this becomes part of your, the business model for your consultancy. Okay. And I've yeah. no doubt it, it is going to be, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, have you sensed, you know, of what sort of impact this could create? Because it now can create an impact for your consultancy as a sort of a service, but also for that hybrid tribe that you're talking about. And some of them are feeling quite lost at the moment, uh, Norma. What difference do you think this can make? Well, I think um, because I live with like three generation um, Y and one generation Z, you know, um, so I can see and they've all worked from home, you know, throughout the pandemic. And oftentimes I find that there's, you know, they're kind of left to their own devices and there's not a lot of engagement. And so I think this would be aimed at, you know, um, young emerging managers, maybe HR managers, project managers. And it's to help them to how do we engage with the team? Because, you know, when in my project management training, a lot of the work is focused on the task and you have all these tools, you know, you have your Gantt chart and your work breakdown structure and all these tools that help you to kind of manage and measure tasks. 
But what I found, you know, working with project managers, they struggle with the engagement side of it. How do I motivate my team? How do I get them on board? How do I get buy-in from senior leadership? And it's more the, the people side, you know, and what we like to call in project management, the power skills. That's what people really want advice and how can I do that? And I think this is a very, you know, simple tool and, you know, often people get bogged down in theory. And even I was speaking to a HR manager yesterday and, you know, they were saying they want something in bite sized chunks that people don't want the traditional training manual they, and they want something that's easy, accessible. And I think that's what this tool will give people in a very easy way. And it just makes it part of the language as well. And that is not because a, a lot of there's a lot of articles and writings about, you know, engagement and culture as if it's, you know, this, you know, as I say, this woolly thing, but it's not. It's quite simple, actually. I mean, to build a culture of recognition, you know, or to build a culture of appreciation, it starts by saying a simple thank you, you know, or to build a collaborative culture. It starts by a simple you know, how can I help you? You know, how can I support you? And like the tool, you know, I read about Dell, uh, Michael Dell, and they did a survey of their people back in 2003. And, you know, they asked, you know, they found out that 50% of people would go to a different, you know, workplace. And so what they did then was he put a, a bulldozer on his desk. And that was a reminder to him to not just kind of bulldoze through his ideas without collaborating with people. And that's simple little tools. Cues, Cues yeah. Yeah, 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 I love it. I love it. And I'm sure there's people watching this now, and uh, Norma, and saying, "What a great journey, you know, uh, to to get from wherever we were back in September to this point, you know." For people that might be considering a, a program like this, Norma, or this program itself, and I love the idea that you start by saying 40 years out, you know, maybe of when you were first in university, when you got that student number, what advice would you give to the people, whether no matter what age they are, but maybe that are working similar to you, trying to fit this in? Yeah, like I, I'd highly recommend it, you know, um, and I think, I mean, if you look, the best places to work was produced there on Sunday. It was in the Sunday Independent and like Google was number one. And, you know, they say like, you know, to give 20 percent of time to people to innovate and, you know, and otherwise we just get bogged down in the day to day stuff. So like this program is kind of, you know, essentially takes 20 percent of your time. But I think it's a massive you get a massive return on investment for it. Um, you know, the course was great. I mean, it was divided into two semesters over 30 weeks. The first semester we did a group project. So, you know, we learned all about the design thinking tools, collaborative tools, you know, working together as a group. Um, and, you know, you're doing presentations and, you know, it's, you know, it's all virtual, but yet, you know, we were very much a cohesive group we had loads of support, thanks to yourself and Fiona and Bryony and Gail, you know, you know, fantastic support from the lecturers. We had a great rep in um, James Moynihan. You know, he was fantastic. I mean, he's very articulate, vocal and wonderful, wonderful guy um, and represented us, you know, really well. And you had all those kind of support networks, which is fantastic. And then the second semester, we did a individual project, but we had the help of everybody. So, you know, we had a WhatsApp group and, you know, we'd help each other and people, have, you know, because you have people from all different walks of life and different experiences. So it's very diverse um, and very interesting. And, you know, I think for 30 weeks, 20 percent of your time, you know, if companies are thinking of looking for new products or new new customers or new markets, it's a great way to kind of just switch off and just devote your time to doing that. So, and I think especially in this VUCA world, you know, where everything is changing so rapidly that and organizations are talking about, we have to reinvent. And, you know, I do think it's, it's it was it was a terrific course. I mean, I loved it. I got a huge value out of it. I have never created this. I mean, you do hit brick walls, um, you know, because I mean, I remember for our second um, sprint, and we had to come up with an artifact. And I had like no artifact. I had done all this research and I had, you know, everything was all over the place. 
But the fact that I had to create an artifact forced me to come up with something. Now, it wasn't the eventual artifact, but what it did allow me to do was to go back to people and say, what do you think of this and get their feedback? And it really, you know, having that initial prototype, um, it, it just really, you know, I really got great feedback then. And I think that's why, personally, I think, I, I mean, I, I, you know, that, that there is potential in this product. And, and, and that's, um, you know, because of, you know, the sprints and the, and all of that. So I think for me, and, and I think for, you know, most of my colleagues, when I talk to them, they got a huge value out of it. Um, and it's a very short time, really, to be honest. It is, yeah, and it goes quickly as well, Norma. And you know what you say reminds me of, and it's I think it's a lovely maybe way to finish it. You know, if we want to go quicker, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together. And I think that sense of not just, the, let's say, the, the uh, experts that were attending from outside, not just the teaching faculty, but actually the expertise that were in the group of participants themselves was absolutely fantastic. And being able to lean on that network and hopefully lean on it right into the future as well, Norma. Yeah. Norma, thank you so, so much for giving your time. Can I just say one thing before Do we go, Roger? I was very lucky that I had a sponsor in Barry O'Sullivan from FEXCO and you know that was a huge support to me and that kept me on track as well and sometimes when I would be going off piste you know he would bring me back on track so I just want to say a huge thank you to Barry O'Sullivan from FEXCO because I don't think I'd have come you know had such you know a want you know um a wonderful time and come up with such a great product had enough been for his guidance and his persistence and his support. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Barry O'Sullivan from Pexco. That's a lovely touch. Yeah. And and um, again, Barry's always been very good, very supportive, always willing to give his time. So I'd, I'd even second that from a, a programme point of view, uh, Norma. Norma, take care. And I know we're going to see more of you. And I, I, I'm i <laughs> fairly sure we're also going to see more of this tool into, into the future. So take care of yourself, Norma. Lovely. Thanks so much, Paddy. Thanks a million. Take care. Bye-bye.